Birdie Project is so relevant in that kids are working together and loving working together. They feel that they are helping humanity. They grow, they pick, they slice, they cook, they serve together. It's not about any one person, but it's been a hugely collective um, endeavor, uh, you know, without a lot of structure that, in spite of itself, has grown and thrived. Many people at the school have said to me that the garden is the heart of the school. Mi nombre es Bienvenida Mesa. Bueno, yo comencé a venir, mis hijos comenzaron a venir a esta escuela. Ya como el año 1991. Antes allá era la el primer jardín que que le digo que sembraban las señoras de Asia. We want to show our children, you know, um, how to plant and how we work in our country. But over here, most of farm they have equipment. For us, no equipment. We just do by hand, you know. That was a green sign up there. And it's going to tell us, welcome to Richmond. So, as we cross the track, and we, 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 we're in Richmond, North Richmond. We would say, once you go across the tracks, you're in big trouble. <laughs> This, this community, you know, it, it was a, a, a thriving community. And, and when you see these vacant lots, there was once houses. You can see this store here, which is a, a liquor store now. These used to be grocery stores. So there's 18 churches in this community, 18 churches. But now where the congregation used to be just budging out of here, now it's hard to find young people. And that's just how the, the ties has turned. I mean, the poverty we have and um, the violence, drug abuse, and I think all, it call, all come to a circle. I mean, because the kids end up to be, I mean, it's a lot of parents in jail, it's a lot of parents in drugs, and our kids end up either in foster care or being raised by one parent, being raised by grandparents. So, I mean, it's a really hard uh, environment for our kids that they have to be dealing with every day. Well, this is a very dangerous neighborhood, as you can see when you're driving here. Um, they definitely see people selling drugs when they walk back and forth to school. A lot of our students come with a lot of problems from home. I mean, as soon as you hear from other people, where are you coming to Richmond? Like, oh my God, how can you live there? I mean, people need to really actually be here to see how things are. Just, I mean, it's a lot of negativity, but it's a lot of good things. And it is a lot of people trying to help out and trying to make the difference here. Our kids is people like anybody else who just need the support and help. At Verde Garden, it's a different picture. I see hope. I see, you know, kids working together. I see kids talking. I see kids having fun. And 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 Verdi, they're really blessed to have this. Look at this. They're really blessed to have this. It's wonderful. And the kids, when they come, they come running. The the stuff that they learn in the garden will stick with them as they get older. A lot of the kids function a lot better when they're moving, and so there's always a lot. You know, it's beautiful out here. There's a lot of work for them to do and. It's very peaceful. In a way, I feel like because we're in such an urban area, this experience gives them a piece of what nature is like, and they don't have a lot of it. Cuando estoy en el jardín, me hace sentir bien. Me hace sentir muy bien. Siento que estoy muy feliz. I spoke with the garden teacher and asked uh, her to design her our garden focuses around the curriculum when she found every place in every grade level across curriculums where she could put highlights of how the garden might impact student learning. But our garden really supports student learning. And you take the green off of the top of right there and you just squish from the top and take out the juice. 
Some of them doesn't have no when they're little. They don't have no. But the biggest one, it has a lot. Like this one. I think one. I think this one has honey. This has honey. Cool. Mm. Our teacher will come out with the whole classroom and we'll go over there and sit down and that group will have a, um, a, a teaching part, it'll have a hands-on part, and it will usually have some sort of snack. We also are involved with at least four different classrooms with ongoing projects. Um, and so under the category of service learning, kind of learning by doing, having a sort of three-dimensional, five senses relationship to learning. A nosotros nos gustan esas flores porque son blancas y muy bonitas, se llaman daisies, y crecen muy rápido, y las puedes cortar y las puedes tener de adorno. And so last year, um, our second unit, it was about uh, business, starting a business, and so we created a business. The kids um, took photographs out here in the garden and then made cards, and this year, we wrote, po they took photos again, and we made a calendar. Get them out in the garden, and they just transform. They just transform, because you open up a whole new world. And when you do that for kids sometimes, they want to learn different things. And it's good for your stomach if you have a tummy ache. It's good for your skin. You can make lotions and creams out of it. What we call food has gone through a radical change with um, processed foods. So they're eating, but they're not necessarily eating foods that are nutritious and they're not necessarily exposed to those foods. We had a program with uh, high school youth. We went around to all the little liquor stores in North Richmond, because there's no grocery store. And we looked for vegetables and there were no vegetables there. One place there were some moldy onions. Los niños se asustan cuando miran las papas debajo de la tierra, no saben, ellos piensan que nacieron el safe way. They can come and help and they can see and how the plan go, how you plan, how we get the fruit from the plan. Siempre ellos invitan más, más niños. También los padres, a veces me los encuentro en la calle o la tienda. Me, allá mi hijo dice que fue al jardín y comieron, dice, y ellos quieren hacer en la casa. Un poco en la mañana le pregunté uno, ¿dónde crecen la, las fresas? A ver si se recuerda. No, dice de un árbol, mi papá cortó, dice. <laughs> There's something lost, I think, um, with um, kids not knowing the real basics to life, and that's, um, you know, grocery shopping how to make a grocery list. You know, what do you do when you go to the grocery store? How do you look at a recipe and, and make that? I have anecdotes, you know, of students coming to the garden and, you know, near the beginning of the school year and they're wondering, like, can they really eat this stuff? They're looking at your, what to me are basic everyday vegetables, but they don't recognize it, you know, and then wondering why they're not wrapped in plastic. And then throughout the course of the school year, for those newer students, you see a change of, you know, when can we eat this? When can we do that? A veces comemos broccoli, es muy rico, pero te ayuda. Y comemos manzanas, zanahorias, y, y fresas. Y, y hacemos té, y es, es muy, y te ayuda mucho. Mi otra compañera, ella sembró, sembró aquí, sembró por allá. Todos los de preschool habían sembrado, el año pasado sembraron. Y un día, una niña que viene ahora aquí, que ya está en segundo grado, creo, cortó unas y me dice, mira, cómetelo. Le digo, yo no he comido eso, cómetelo. Dice, esto sabe mejor que un chicle, dice. The two favorite things in the garden is strawberries and flowers. My favorite is flowers and Apples. It makes me feel happy, glad, and smiling. We were the first school in West Contra Costa County to have a salad bar. And when the salad bar started, the um, person at the kitchen said, no way are our students going to eat 
these vegetables in the salad bar. And the salad bar really quickly caught on and became a hugely popular. So the garden provides us with um, a number of fruits and vegetables and things that we may, not, may or may not have at home a lot, but I think that the challenge of teaching our parents about healthy eating so that it trickles down to our children is one of the main pieces I think that Verdi is still going to continue to work with. Vegetable really good for the children, you know. I am not um, going to um, let my grandchildren go to McDonald's too much. <laughs> yeah. So I think starting earlier with the first five of uh, years of a child's life, introducing fruits and vegetables that they may or may not be accustomed to, you know, trying, I think that those are important steps of bringing in home to school connection and then continuing that, that when they enter kindergarten, it's not the first time that they've experienced the garden, but that it's a legacy that by the time that they're sixth grade, they come back and they visit and they say and they share testimonies of how important um, developing good healthy eating habits really are, you know, to themselves and uh, just in their lives. Many of the children express uh, during their lunch hour how important it is to go and just reconnect with the garden. And I think that what they're seeing is reconnecting with nature. They get hands-on experiences of seeing butterflies, uh, caterpillars, coming from a caterpillar to a cocoon and then to a butterfly. They get a chance to really see life evolve out there and that things don't have to die, but that things can change. Nosotros somos garden leaders y nosotros enseñamos a los niños que hacen y ellos tienen que hacer lo que nosotros hacemos para cuando crezcan que sean iguales que nosotros. A mí me gusta hacer un garden leader porque puedo venir todos los días y puedo plantar flores y puedo tener mis propias flores. ¿A ti qué te gusta? Y podemos enseñar a los niños a plantar. And the beginning of this year we had one student who came into the garden and she said this is the best day of my life. We were having a class and one of the kids just, he just closed his eyes and he was savoring it and he said, Chef Shelley, this is like heaven. <laughs> we have so many issues, poverty and all that, so at least we have something positive that I feel that influences our school. It's a nice place and a natural place. We have our kids coming and having, a, I mean, at least something positive that it can be in their lives. Happy kids who eat healthy food who come to school every day looking forward to saying, I learned something either in the garden that connected to my learning or from my learning that I could take back to the garden to see if it's really there. All of that plays an important role. And we sometimes overlook the small things, but children find even the smallest ant and say, even they are living out of the garden. So that when they see the communities of people and we go out and we find an ant hill out in our garden area, we say to them, don't disturb that community. Respect that nature, you know, that, that natural way that the ants are working together. And it's just like they're working together, teaming up. That's what we need to do in our communities. It really shows that people are connected by a common thread, one humanity, one DNA. And that if there's a common goal, a common love, uh, or just common existence, they're going to help each other. They'll be happy because they're doing something positive. And they really, uh, believe that they're doing something for the community and they love the outdoor and you find that kids are alike in so many ways and so the garden allows kids to be themselves. They allow kids to grow. These kids will let you see a glimmer of hope and say, hey, this is what we can be if we only just let be.